Mm. Today's episode of the Live, Cure, or Die podcast brought to you by Tactical Distributors. Unpossible 15 gets you 15% off all this great stuff. A reversible coat, sweet ass t-shirt, and they just sent me these summer shorts. Oh my God. Can we get this out of here? We can. So these shorts, they're breathable. The boys, they're cool as hell. They're short. They're not too short. They're not too long. They're not Daisy Dukes. They're not Dirty Dukes. They're just right. So, Unpossible 15 gets you 15% off. Flip-flops, bags, shirts, pants, everything you need. They got those panties. What are those? Uh, the, the, the tactical brief things. They're so comfortable. And your junk comes right out when you need to take a pee. Holla. All right, guys, we're back, including Jay made it back from Texas, even though he got a little air sick on the airplane. So we're checking his Air Force creds right now. Uh, we're here with my buddies, Chad and Judson from Georgia, my redneck mountain buddies that I love and adore and miss like crazy. That really got me into the pig hunting and have probably shot more things with Three Blackout than most people. We're also blessed with tons of gifts this week. So thank you. We got an arcade, skateboard, lots of beverages. So... Thanks for tuning in. Jay. Hello, sir. My man. I'm back. You're back. How you doing? We good. A little tired, but I'm good. A little tired. Good hunt. Good, good fun. Great hunt. Great fun. So, um, we're here with our buddies. My little bestie, Chad. Scorpion King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and talk some shit about Judson. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 nah, so, Judson. Our little friend. <laughs> our, little, our little buddy, Judson. So, he's our neighbor at the farm as well. Hunting partner there. Partner in fun, mm-hmm. and uh, he's the enforcer. We don't take no bullshit up there, if you know what I'm saying, Jay. I hear you. So, <laughs> so the Scorpion King was fun. You got a nickname for Judson? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> wait till he leaves. I'll wait till he heads yeah. back to Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I uh, I understand that you believe uh, Air Force is in your blood. Uh, yeah. You do. <laughs> yeah. It is still. It's uh, not still. drone flying. No, no, no. Still. Um, you don't. Did you drink while you were gone? Uh, no. Well, I, I, I received an interesting photo of you Yeah. Uh, holding a barf bag up to your face, looking pathetic on a plane. Yeah. What what, uh, what happened? Did you lose all your blood or something? Yeah, well, first of all, it may have looked pathetic, but if you were in the moment, it was pretty covert, pretty uh, high speed. But, yeah, I don't know. We, on the way down to Texas, um, I had fallen asleep at one point, and we were just, like, about to land, and I woke up. And I was talking to Colin. I was like super tired, hadn't eaten, whatever. The only thing I had was like some airplane coffee or whatever. But I woke up, we're talking. He's next to me, hey, whatever. And I was like, I think I'm just going to throw up. <laughs> and he was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I don't really feel good. And so the gears had just gone down, like the landing gear had just gone down on the plane. So I grabbed this, <laughs> you this mean, little bag. You're saying they didn't downshift. It's the <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, they didn't, yeah, they didn't lose any <laughs> gears. But so I grabbed the little bag. But there was a family next to me that's like trying to take selfies out the window and stuff because we're about to come down. And they're excited. So I'm like, well, I'm not trying to ruin their day. Oh, I totally would have. Well, so I kind of I held on and just tried to wait till like we touched. But I just didn't have it in me. So I threw the, the bag up. and But it was only a little bit. And I was super, super quiet. Colin was like doing something. He might have texted somebody. And by the time he looked up, he's like, did you just throw up? I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, for then sure. how did I get a picture of it? Oh, I don't. Well, I was holding on to it like, re- like ready to rock, and I think he took the picture then. Um, but then he hmm. went. He was well, probably well, sending you that picture. And well, then well Thomas, like, why don't we put it up on the screen now? And let people decide. Yeah, we can do that. It was great. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> do you do you know for certain that he was in the Air Force? I, I'm starting to question it. I didn't know him though. Okay, could've, well, I wasn't a pilot in the Air Force. Could have been record. on ground maintenance. Yeah, no. I yeah, I built bombs. I didn't touch planes. Well, I guess they don't build bombs in, in airplanes. No, <laughs> no, no, we do it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have talked to my buddy Chad about his uh, recipe for avoiding avoiding this sort of seasickness, air yeah. sickness. I didn't think I'd get it, and so it kind of snuck up on me. It was a little, just exciting little surprise. Yeah. And then I just took the bag and rolled it up and discarded it. 
secretly into the back <laughs> of the seat. <laughs> the For person. some oh. six-year-old to find yeah. it on yeah. the next flight. I had too asshole. much in my hand, so I was like, candy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, <laughs> our buddy Judson. Judson, what what is it exactly what you do? You don't have to say the department or anything. I work for a sheriff's office in Georgia. Yeah. Been in 10 years now, law enforcement. Yeah, so um, th- they send you to get the uh, people that there's warrants out for that they don't want to come in? Yes, and s- some of them's naked every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> fun times. Are those the fun ones? <laughs> fun times. Yes. What, what do you do? Just just whip out the Vaseline gun and go to town? No, uh, no, 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 not them. <laughs> not them. <laughs> do, um, <laughs> so so what, what's your record? You undefeated with a... With, when you get your hands on somebody? So far. I heard you got your ass whooped. No, I did. It, by yes. a porch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So what happened? Well, we had a a uh, kid threatened to kill his mom, and Damn. he was inside this trailer. So we're all rushing to the scene. We get there. I get the shield out. So I start down, and they said, go up on the porch with that shield. <laughs> So uh, when I was going, the steps were brand new, so I didn't think nothing about the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up there, and, you know, every once in a while when you fall, you, you get a little bit of a shake or a crack. Yeah. No, it just, just gave got, way, trap yeah, door. It, it, just like a cartoon. It, boom. <laughs> it all hit the ground. We did you all, land on anybody? Yes, I did. <laughs> Are the, did they die? No, they made it. <laughs> I bet they were so unhappy. Yeah, I catch shit for it every day now. Did anybody laugh? Except, I mean, when it happened or just now? Everybody no, laughed. nobody was laughing until we all got out. <laughs> what did the dude say when y'all crashed his porch? <laughs> he come to the door finally. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, shit, what'd y'all do to my porch? <laughs> so he scurried around the, come down the step. Finally, he gave up. Figured you were gonna wreck the house apart. Yeah, he said, go. "Oh God, they're gonna turn my house over if I don't come out." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, miraculously nobody got a nail splinter, and we was all with our guns out, and no rounds went off at all. So it was just a few bruised ribs. Yeah, <laughs> how many people are on this porch? Four. <laughs> Y- y'all have new protocol? Well, there was, there was five <laughs> with me up there. like two people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't then, believe you fell on somebody. It's like the unluckiest day of their whole career. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they give me, they look at me every day and say, I am not following you onto a porch <laughs> anymore. So from now, every now, not from since that happened, every porch I walk on, I kind of do the little test <laughs> <laughs> throw one of the small guys up there first make yeah. sure it's okay uh, jay a few years ago where chad's judson comes by he's busted up right here he's got stitches hanging out of his head and everything and i'm like who in the hell picks a fight with him a girl did that too <laughs> yeah from the previous job i was in the pr- working prison system mm. Yeah, she was clawing another officer's eyes out. So I was tackled her, but in the process, we hit and slid, and I caught the catwalk handrail, iron pole, steel pole right on the brow there, and it busted me wide open. They had to replace it. Yeah. 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 It had a big dent in it. That's what he says. I think she just hit him with an elbow, <laughs> <laughs> laid him out. Uh, yeah. So what about you, your trip? You just, uh, you're in Texas, so you throw up as soon as you land. Yeah, yeah, get excited. Yeah. And, uh, lose my, my little bit of coffee. But yeah, we went, went down for um, Warm and Fuzzy and Ford Observations Group did a raffle for FPC, Firearms Policy Coalition, raised a bunch of money. Um, so we went down, we donated a fix, a honey badger, two cans, uh, EOTech supplied some optics for the winter. Yeah, shout out to them. Yeah, it was awesome. Um Everyone was super, super thankful. So what was it? Everybody that. like buys a twenty five or fifty dollar ticket or whatever, and yeah. then something they randomly chose someone to win it. Yeah, exactly. So it was a fifty dollar ticket, um, and basically, you it was unlimited tickets for this raffle. You spend the fifty bucks or however much money, and you were entered to win the fix, the honey badger, the cans, like fully kitted out, um, and then you plus one got flown down to Texas to this ranch. Uh, we stayed at the G two ranch in Texas. It's in 
Pearsall, Texas, I believe is where we were at. Near San Antonio? Yes, yeah, about an hour away. Um, so we were there, and then they got uh, one free exotic. All the pro- like the meat got processed, a free mount. Um, so the guy who won, I think he only bought one ticket. And it, it turns out this was like the third or fourth raffle he's won like in a year. Just like shoes or whatever. He's just the luckiest dude in the world. But um, he was a really cool dude. He brought his dad, which was awesome. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, and his dad was having a great time. Like, That's quite the prize. Yeah, it, insane mm-hmm. prize. Like. Yeah, what what he sh- he shot an oryx or something? He shot uh, a scimitar. It was oryx. A, it was a gemsbok. We thought it was a we thought it was a. No, it's got the. We thought it was a, a simbok, but no, no, gemsbok. it's got it's got the curved horn. It, it it looked like the one at the office outside of my office. No, I think it was either a simbok, uh, simbok or a, a gemsbok. Okay, so apparently they don't have these in the air force. I'm pretty sure no. it was a scimitar oryx. But well, was so the, a, simb- anyway. the simbok is the the. <laughs> one fucking job, yeah. one job. Well, the, the turn sim- off your phones. <laughs> the, forgot about that. The, Damn it. The simbok is the is the the cross between a scimitar oryx and a gemsbok. For real? Yeah, yeah. So they well, breed, they interbreed them. Yeah, I hey, I learned about it this weekend, but I don't know. Man. Um, but it was great. He shot anyway, it with shot a, that. They're delicious. Yeah, and he shot it with a a six five fix, um, with a trash panda on it. No, I'm sorry, a jumbo shrimp on it. Yeah, and. Just a like 150 yard poke. He'd never shot anything before. Really? Yeah, and he put a perfect shot on it. Um, that is not the way it goes for us guys. Yeah, no. no oh, he, never shot anything before. I win this trip, and they're gonna give me all these awesome guns. Take me to a ranch and yeah. get to kill a big oryx. Yeah, we actually found <laughs> out after too. It was funny that. So he, I mean, it's Good not funny. Him. It's it's not funny for him, but he has an eye disease where he's. he's like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's, what an <laughs> asshole you are. No, no. Yeah. Well, it's not, no, but he was saying he's asshole like he's show, like pretty or. blind in one eye and partially blind in the other. And we were all standing around. He was telling us that. And it's like, oh, that's a good thing you told us after we let you shoot a, an animal, like after we put a gun in your hands. And let, but he was I mean, a really that cool sucks, dude. But awesome for him. That, yeah. You know, he yeah. Got a great experience. And all the dudes that were like, he, it was funny. He showed up with a, um, he had one of the Rainbow Badger shirts on. I like saw oh. it in the morning. I was like, hey, man, like cool shirt. Cause I don't think we gave it to him or whatever. He's like, yeah, I've had this for a while. Like, I love your stuff. So it was really cool. It, Oh, that's cool. He happened to be a fan of all the guys that were there, and there was a huge group of um, of guys, uh, as well as the the people who put it on. Yeah. FPC made a made an appearance. Uh, Adam Kraut, who we had on the podcast, and Jeff Sylvester, and everyone came. It was a really cool cool opportunity. Oh, so there's a bunch of people there. Yeah, there were yeah. thirty something people, I think. Uh, well, that's awesome. So I saw that uh, they wrote a check for one hundred sixty one thousand dollars to FPC. Yeah, the people like that are actually yeah, suing one, ATF and holding them accountable for bullshit. Yeah, so it was one hundred sixty one or one hundred sixty three, something like that, almost two hundred thousand um, dollars, just from the raffle. So all the raffle money went straight to FPC, um, and it was just it was a really good opportunity to be there. We're really glad we got to be a part of it. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm all about us. Well, I love when we donate and someone like that wins. The guy, you know, and the guy last time where we did the mystery shirt. Yeah. yeah he's great. at the T-ball game holding his little baby. and went, oh, That's cool. Um, yeah, so this guy wins. But, yeah, donating to causes like that, I yeah, love that. FPC is, so I kind of talked about it when I was there. Um, but growing up, and I've said it on here before, but growing up, hearing all the, the older guys in my family talk about the NRA or whatever, I never really, exp- I never was old enough to kind of know what the NRA was doing. And then now in, I guess, my time, like when we have companies like, or organizations like FPC, and you see them actively fighting, like comparing that to what I know the NRA has, it's it's night and day. And it's well, really cool to see them. Yeah, I mean, I've told the story before, but when I was, you know, young at Advanced Armament, they wouldn't even allow us to set up the NRA show. So, yeah, so it is great to see some younger organizations that, or really want to fight for everyone's Second Amendment rights yeah. and, and not just when it's, you know, meets the politics of that particular organization, whether yeah. it just be hunting or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, it was yeah. cool to see, too. Um, like, you've talked about it on this podcast before, but the, when you went down on one of the trips and a lot of those guys were there and guys that hadn't seen our products getting to hold them and shoot them and, and shoot stuff with them, um, it really is a testament to... You think you know about the product, but you have to hold it. You have to mm. feel it and shoot it to really understand. And once you do, you're like, you're not going to turn back. Every yeah. single person there now is like, I need a fix. I need a mini fix. I need a honey badger. Like, yeah, I mean, it's 
it's cool. It makes a huge difference. I, I know, you know, the three of us hunt pigs on Judson's family's land a lot in Georgia. And yeah, I guess the last one we went, you and I had our procs, but Judson, you got a new, what, a, a semi auto 6.5. Six five, yes. Which looks normal size on him. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what it looks like me holding a ten twenty two. <laughs> but still, you, you know, if we're trying to get out of the vehicle, creep around in the woods, and most of the time we're shooting the pigs at like inside of a hundred yards, mm-hmm. the long gun's a disadvantage. You it built is. a uh, sugar weasel yesterday. Yeah. It looks like a freaking toy yeah. with him. <laughs> Uh, those some of those screws, yeah. Uh, <laughs> those big hands. Oh yeah, you really have to pick this up. <laughs> it was it was cool to see too, because um, a lot of those guys, like just like we like Noveski, but a lot of those guys like Noveski and have. Sure. There were some ghetto blasters and stuff there. Yeah, see my Johnny. There Barrett, is yeah, Johnny from his memorial. We were moving some stuff <laughs> from Georgia. Chad brought oh, up yeah. to New Hampshire and unpacked one of the boxes, and it was in <laughs> That's there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the some some guys there had uh, ghetto blasters or whatever, and. They love them like it's their go-to gun, and then yeah. they we were out at the range, and they were like, "Oh, hey, can I can I try the honey badger or whatever?" And they hold on, and I'm like, "Oh man," they're like, <laughs> Not they're, like what? "They're like, how is it so much lighter?" I'm like, "Yeah, I, I would love to help them update it um, because yeah, it is a pound heavier than ours, but they need yeah. the faster twist barrel and they need the the muzzle taper and some things. I would love for them to get on board with that because I love Nevesky, but some of that it seems it's kind of old school now. Yeah. But, I mean, light matters. I mean, even somebody as strong as Judson, like, if we're going to go, like, where our place, well, their place is in North Georgia, it's in the mountains. Right. So, man, there ain't no use in carrying extra 10 pounds around with you if you got a hike. So. Yeah, no. Even that 6.5 gets a little heavy. Yeah. (laughs) You're making a long trip. Yeah. I mean, some, some of the guys from Ford Observations Group were there, and we had just some guns laying out on the table. And one of them has a an SR twenty five six five SR twenty five so whatever SR twenty six whatever it is I don't even know but six five and it's kitted out it's got a good optic on a night force probably and he had a PVS thirty and all stuff and he's like this is my go to gun I love it uh, use it all the time and we just had a sixteen inch fix sitting next to it with um, an EOTech five to twenty five on it a can bipod and his one of the other guys that was there went to go pick it up and he kind of like jerked it up in the air because he was expecting <laughs> it to be heavy with all this stuff on it. Yeah. And he asked, he's like, is this real? I'm like, he like thought it was a demo gun or something like that. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, we're going to go kill something with it. Like, yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. Like Chad is so stubborn and not into change. He's not young and hip like me and Judson. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, seeing him. Yeah. Would you ever go away from the fix now? Oh, why no. would you do that? <laughs> stupid. I know yeah. he had he had just a. I think we said it on the podcast before. He had a red dot on his until yeah. we went out to Wyoming just a red dot because we're shooting a hundred meters in the six five with a little silencer on it, so light and compact. Yeah, and just with the red dot, it was fine. Yeah, um, and even if you can't, even if people can't switch a gun or they don't want to switch their gun, like even just our cans, like a couple guys, Matt, our. Breck from uh, Dog Egg Collective, and then Matt from Warm Fuzzy. He he shot an Eland with a thirty thirty lever gun with a full Nelson on it, and then Breck shot a a Bison with that thirty thirty with the full I Nelson saw on that it. Picture, yeah, we'll and post it up. Yeah, cool. and there will be video, and it's you, the round hitting the animal sounds louder than the shot just because oh, wow. because oh, yeah. the can is so quiet. Like, and it's it's perfect for it. It's light. It's yeah. Heavy. We, we, I think we've all noticed that hunting a lot around there, shooting pigs, like when you can hear the impact on the animal when you when you make a good shot when you're using the silencer, it's nice. That was the most impressive thing to me for the entire time that we were all hunting. Like everyone who shot something, even Colin shot a uh, a black buck yeah. at it was probably 150, 180, um, and he was using six five with a jumbo shrimp. And the jumbo shrimp's not we don't claim it to be the quietest can in the world, yeah. but even hearing the impact of that, like every single animal that was shot. The impact sounded like a truck. It was crazy. Yeah, I think that's the trend. Lightweight, compact. I mean, that's a hunting silencer. It's just meant to where you don't notice the shot when yeah. you're hunting. This is making me want to go shoot some stuff. Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, just just being there, like, we were telling people about your last trip to Africa, and people were like, oh, Kevin came back, whatever. I said, what did he shoot? I'm like, I lost. He shot 22, uh, 22 animals, and I don't know what he shot. And they're like, 22. <laughs> Freaking out. But it was awesome, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to get back, man. I'm gonna, I don't know. Well, I know what I'm going to shoot this year. I know three animals I'm going to shoot this year. A sable, a roan, and a cape buffalo. But I don't know what else. Just whatever. Opportunity. We're yeah. just rednecks that like to shoot stuff, man. Um, 
Oh, you see JYD, Junkyard Dog. Yes, so sir. when I was a kid, Justin, you liked wrestling, huh? Oh, I loved wrestling. How the hell did you not become a pro wrestler? I had the chance at one time. Oh, wait, how big are you? I'm um, 6'5, 320. What's the most you've ever bench pressed? 515. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, that's all. Yeah. At college, what'd you run the 40 in? Five flat. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but I, I actually had the opportunity one time, and I didn't take you, it. You probably had the opportunity to win the gold medal in the shot put, yeah. um, to be a pro football player, yeah. wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so what happened with wrestling? Why wouldn't you do it? You didn't want to be away from home? I, I really don't know what made me decide that, because I loved it. I grew up watching it. Uh, who, were, who were your favorites? Well, Hulk Hogan, of course. Yeah. And uh, I like the Road Warriors. Yes. Love the Road Warriors. <laughs> yes, the Road Warriors were yeah. awesome. And But I was in the mall, actually, in uh, Athens, Georgia Square. And this guy come up to me. We was walking through, and he come up to me, and he asked, hey, what do you do for a living? And, I, you know, I told him. He said, won't you come to our tryouts for WCW? I, I forgot what it was called, but it was their tryout. Yeah, and he gave me the number and everything, card, and I just I didn't do it. Why not? Can you imagine? <laughs> you would be the the most popular wrestler in the history of the world had you had me as your manager. In <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. I could have picked some fights. By God. Oh, I know. <laughs> I could have picked some fights. For st- you to, he still picks for fights. You. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but have you died yet? Come close. To um, <laughs> yeah, wrestling. Oh man. But yeah. I, yeah. I actually, you know, I had I could have probably. The football, I went to college, played two years, and I actually was – Georgia actually come to my high school like three times and physically talked to me. And uh, when I was coming through high school, I just took what I could take to get by with, which ended up in the end messing me up because of the SAT co- scores and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of regret, regret at some point. I just want to interject yeah. here for a second. I yeah. want to I want to kind of back up when you were talking about you were being in you were in the prison system and you tackled that woman that was scratching mm-hmm. your friend's eyes out <laughs> yeah. and you slid. How hard did you hit this woman? Yeah, did you cut I her down? I was she's <laughs> still alive. I was doing half of the Scorpion King when I hit her. <laughs> <laughs> the mid the airport. That's when I, oh. I, I literally tried to take her head off. <laughs> did it did knock her out? No. We hit. I hit her. I mean, I was speared her. Yeah, in the air, and I caught her. And we hit on the uh, catwalk, and we just slid like that, and hit the. (laughs) I caught that pole. But did she cry? No. Yeah. (laughs) But if I hadn't hit that pole, we would have slid plumb out. We was on the second floor. We'd went slap off the into the. Oh. Yeah. Off the catwalk. Yeah, like a body slam from the. Uh, Women in prison meaner than the men. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, Most so it's not all lesbian yeah. activity and pillow fights. <laughs> no, well, there's some, but, but they are they are mean. Uh, who um, when your job now? Who normally picks a fight with you or messes with you? Either a meth monkey or <laughs> a, uh, somebody someone, little. Uh, yeah, or like literally, brand. They got the mental. Oh, uh, but. Nobody in their right minds picking a fight with you at work. No, they've they've tried a few times, like try to get away. Like, like one guy, he just decided to try to. I was standing right in front of him. He decided he's gonna try to run away. Did you clothesline him and then drop an elbow. Well, it was something like that. <laughs> a few years ago, Judson was sitting on the couch. I snuck around, thought I was gonna, I was just gonna like jump on him. I do it all the time. And like cross body block. And I jumped, you know, I weighed 200 pounds. He caught me in midair and sat me down. (laughs) (laughs) It was humiliating. Yeah. (laughs) Humiliating. Um, Yeah, I always wonder that. Because, you you know, like if who picks fights with giant human beings? I don't know. This guy. Yeah. 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 This guy. Me. Yeah, like I've done a little bouncing, you know, a little bit and. Yeah, people get liquid courage in them. They they don't care, and they will always pick the big one. Always, to they got something to yeah. prove. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it don't work out for them, but they try. You should see we hunt. Somebody shoots a deer in the mountains up there, and Chad and I are about to kill us. Drag it fifty yards, and <laughs> Justin just he carries one of us our guns and just drags <laughs> the deer. <laughs> <at the same laughs> <time>. <laughs> uh, that's man. 
You should see his. Um, did your granddad start that car collection or your dad? My grandfather kind of started that because he was he did race. He was actually one of the original thirteen NASCAR. Rest, raced on the beach at Daytona. But oh, the first one. So, Jay, where where we are in Georgia, like that whole area right there, Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia, is where, like, moonshining started. Mm. So, yeah, sorry, he actually, I mean, he, he will tell you, well, he, he's, he passed away, but he would tell you that's how he got his start with hauling liquor. Yeah. Just like they say on TV. Right, you know? yeah. But, yeah, he actually started the, the race car collection, and then my dad just kind of, Took it to another level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you think your dad probably has like a hundred vintage cars in his yard? No, at least it's it's pretty amazing. But um, yes, yeah, so his dad, his grandfather was one. Oh, ornery son of a gun. So when I bought my farm, they have a um, <laughs> what did you call that store? Kind of like a country store, but it's Carhartt clothes and stuff yeah, like it's, that. It's one of the largest inventories in our neck of the woods you know north georgia yeah like a, so, like a trading post or something yeah sort of like yeah. that uh-huh. so his granddad when i bought the place his, his grandfather was still alive and ran it oh man he was he's was scary Henri. oh yeah Henri old guy i remember we were i was cutting the roads on my property and it hadn't been touched in a long time i think chad's family used to own the property that oh, i yeah. had mm-hmm. and their uh their family store is at the end of my road and uh, the logging trucks would pull into their parking lot. They had a big, got a big parking lot, and to do whatever for they live. And I walk in there one day, and his granddad's like, "You the you the boy that owns that property over there?" <laughs> yes, sir. He goes, "You know, it takes sixty years to grow them trees." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yes, sir. Okay, <laughs> we'll stop cutting them." <laughs> but yeah, Chad and I found what nine sites on the property I used yeah. to own where there yeah. were were liquor stills. Hmm. Mm. So it's it's pretty cool up there. Everyone that would come to see you, I mean, I won't say it's like any of Judson's family or anything, but if they come to see you at your property and they just want to like drive around or hang out or whatever, they bring you a mm. jar of moonshine. Oh, yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying there's some in the freezer there, but you could taste some. (laughs) Um, It might make you get naked. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. Tommy, can you go get him some now? I do not want to see that. Can't get a girl, get a long hair boy. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so how long has your family been up there? 17 years. Yeah, something like that. So the same as yours? Yeah, Yeah, actually, we we, we come from the... The all same line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're on the same It's so line. funny. You don't get but up there. It's it's like one of the smallest counties in mm-hmm. Georgia and stuff, but there's only like three families. And I mean, they're all related. Like everybody is one of their cousins. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, unless they're idiot, then they don't claim them. But yeah. I, otherwise. Yeah, we don't claim them. Yeah, yeah, they're on. What was that? The Battle of the Narrows? Something? Yes. There was a Civil War battle on y'all's mm-hmm. property. It is. Mm-hmm. Battle of the Narrows. It's not really documented a lot, but it was one of the one of the one, only times that the confederate won a battle yeah. there was a big ridge line up there and they would they would just basically ambushing them they'd wait as soon as they'd crest the, the ridge they would just unload finally oh, made a retreat signs and stuff up there yeah, that's cool it's an interesting place but yeah chad and i find these these places on my property there's a bunch of springs and where they were still remember the one with all the barrel bands like revenuers yeah, cut with yeah. axes the oh, you yeah. know so like the barrel bands there's like hundreds of them stacked up in this one place yeah, that was a big site yeah it's pretty cool up there we, we didn't yeah. have pigs the whole time but we started getting like in the valley so my place was on top of one of the mountains so so they live down the valley below this huge valley beautiful so we started getting pigs in there what like seven or eight years ago probably yeah how many pigs do you think we've shot in there now probably close to 200 i guess at least it's a good time yeah our man judson stepped the game up this this -hmm. year he got the cell phone cameras oh yeah so chad and i just be playing uno hanging out with the chicks (laughs) and he'll text us if he's not around is the pig over there we just ride over there and it's so easy now oh yeah so fun (laughs) Yeah, yeah, until you're you're the one working and <laughs> yeah, yeah. these jackasses go and kill them. All. Hey, we, we pay for the corn sometimes. Yeah, they yeah, do. yeah. sometimes. Yeah, we share. I'll share the love. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty fun though. It's pretty fun. That's but that's the place on Judson's uh, family's places where Chad Scorpion King. Right. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so beautiful. Uh, so beautiful. Um, 
Well, what you was this? A, this wasn't the first thing you shot this hunt in Texas, huh? No, I've shot. I mean, growing up here, I've shot whitetail and um, like little predators when you when you see like coyotes and stuff if you see them out. But um, that's it. I had never shot any exotics or anything. Yeah, it's like the first hunt other than up here where yeah. you're from. You've been on. Yeah, yeah, and a completely different type of hunting too. So fun. Yeah, and I'm I'm really excited that I got to shoot it with a shoot it with a mini fix. Um, oh, it was the mini fix. Yeah, so I, I shot that Jacob sheep with a mini fix. Um, you know, that's, I think the first <coughs> animal named in the Bible. You might know that. Really? You're familiar with it. I didn't Bible. know that. Did you know no, that? No, I, didn't know I that. think it is. I the four horned sheep. Yeah. It was cool because everyone wanted to shoot whatever, an eland or a black buck, like something nice looking. And that's going to be the best skull mount you've ever seen. Yeah. Right, this this older. ranch owner, nice. he was like, hey, we got a four horn. It's an old four horn sheep and it's gone through some wars. And I was like, I'll shoot it. <laughs> and uh, so it was not, not anything crazy, not too far. I was probably like, 115, 120 yards. And well, that, I mean, that's an 8-inch barrel, 300 blackout? Yeah. That's the mini fix you were shooting? Yeah, and I had a half Nelson on it. And uh, What and what bullet did you use? Uh, I think it was a 115 pig punisher, Gorilla. So shout out to Gorilla Ammunition. Thank you for hooking us up. I wonder who makes that bullet. Um, it's not the Lehigh, because we had some control chaos, but that's a that's a Lehigh. I can't remember who makes this bullet, um, but we, we can find out. Um, it's either a 115 or 125. I can't remember, but it was... It was awesome. It, we were in some thick stuff, and uh, the ranch owner was like, "Hey, shoot it in the neck," because it was old. Had I mean, you saw the picture. It had tons of tons of mats and all the wool everywhere. Oh, they're gnarly <coughs> animals when they get yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah, like, "Because it's, it's tough." Yeah, I mean, you got to be careful with bullet selection because as they get old like that too, they get matted up, right? And, and all that wool it ends up like armor, yeah. on them. So you can't shoot like a really small, high velocity bullet; they'll come apart and not yeah. penetrate. Yeah. So he was saying, I mean, we were in some. Well, he told us before that this thing had gotten torn up somewhere and he was working on a tractor one day and saw it come out and it was its leg was all torn up like split open and he he roped it and stapled it together and he said and Jesus. after and after that it became just a warrior it was like fighting stuff it just it had a second chance i guess and it decided to not waste or it or was in pain <laughs> yeah or was in pain yeah so um yeah well, once we rolled up on it he said hey shoot it in the neck and just the way it was positioned it was kind of popped away from us quartered away from us and um, that we had a, a guy, Monroe Media, Jay Monroe. Uh, he was filming with a, a red camera, super high res. And we'll, once I get the link, I'll, or I'll send it and we can hopefully put it up. I will have it for this time. But, um, I got up on it and I, I just, I'm glad I told him because I said, Hey, I'm ready when you're good. And he's like, Give me one second. So I'm glad I waited that second and then shot it in the back of the head and it, it went down immediately. It sounded like a, a train hit it. And nice. you'll see in the video just threw the head forward and dropped it immediately. So it was oh, that's awesome. It was awesome. It was a real good good time. And then we walked up on it. It was a good cool thing. And then of course we sent it to you guys and everyone's like, This is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was that Thomas? Was that your comment? Somebody said that's like the ugliest animal that I've ever seen. And were you the was, one that said like and uh It was Adam. He's oh like, he did? Yeah, he's like and why he, yeah, because Tommy said that's the ugliest creature I've ever seen. And Adam said, yeah, why is it holding on to a dead sheep? <laughs> <laughs> Adam's funny, man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's he, funny. he comes with everyone. Everyone at the ranch thought that was the greatest thing in the world. So You know, I'd never shot many animals, I guess, until I got the farm and yeah. started hanging out with you guys. And I learned, um, I guess I had to learn to, to, to Count. D- drive in the mountains. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And... Uh, Mm. Still need you remember that when we slid down the dam and Judson bailed out? Like yeah. we started to roll in this Jeep. Oh. We slid off the back <laughs> of the dam and Judson, this asshole, and he's like the anchor holding right. holding us from rolling oh. over. And it was a blazer. And he just popped the door open and jumped out. And we slid all the way down the, the dam. Well, somebody had to call 911. <laughs> you had to go to work. Yeah. yeah. It was so funny. Yeah. We had been, it'd been raining. It was wet. And there's a lot of red clay. And I hadn't learned to drive off the road at that point. And, uh, we'd, we'd been up at the range. So at, at the property, the range was like a mile from the house. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we had to drive across the back of the, the pond on the dam. And I slid <laughs> off of it like a fucking idiot. Judson jumped out. And. And I thought he was hurt. He was sitting up there. What you like throwing <laughs> up yeah, or something? I thought I was throwing up, but I was laughing so hard I was crying and gagging. And <laughs> That's why I threw up on a plane, something. actually. But w- we had the guns in the in the back of the blazer, and we had to call Beachy farmhand. He comes down with the tractor, pulls it out. We get back in it, take off, and we're cruising around. The guns are in the back, unloaded. Chad and Sabrina in the back seat. Me and 
all eject her in the front seat. And, <laughs> and uh, remember, we get to the like up on that one ridge, and a red fox ran across in front of us and sees us and goes up on the thing. And I'm like, Chad, get the gun. And he has to get the gun and load it and hand it to me, and it's running. And, and what was that you did to stop it? <laughs> Dude, he stopped that thing with that little, that yeah. little kiss. Uh, yeah. Like a rodent will. <laughs> Yeah, and it, uh, oh, man, stopped, just broadside, and, and we shot it. And now I'm like, hey, assholes, if I would not slid down the back of the dam, we wouldn't have shot this yeah, box. There you go. Yeah, Almost been, killed us. Yeah. And, and that, Judson. but I learned from that because, you know, like a few months later, I was with, uh, or maybe it was even years, God, I don't know. I was with David Price mm-hmm. and drive, we, we had been deer hunting. We are driving back to the house one day, ran, ran across in the front of the driveway there a gray fox, and it yeah. ran. It was hauling ass, and I did the same thing, and it stopped, and it allowed me enough time mm-hmm. to jump out of the Jeep, grab the gun in the back, and shoot it. It's the one that's mounted at the off. Oh, yeah. So, see, you learn all these yeah. cool redneck tricks, Right, man. there you go. That's yeah. predator hunting mm-hmm. right there. You just cruise around, you see something. You make a, you yeah. blow it a kiss, and it'll a stop. Kiss, kiss <laughs> of death. <laughs> it stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what, what are they going to do? Are they publishing videos on this? Yeah, thing in so, Texas or what? Yeah, so all the basically every um, every entity that was there, um, most of them are content creators, whether it's photography or videography. Um, so as as people are going through it, we'll all have a, a big Dropbox that that's shared, and we'll get a bunch of stuff out. Um, it was a really cool example of like the community coming together and, and getting stuff done. Like Surefire sent us some lights. Oh, that's EO, awesome. EOTech sent all the optics and stuff. Um, I used night vision goggles from a company that's actually local to here called Nocturne Industries. Um, everyone just came together to make it make it happen, and it was awesome, and all for a good cause too. Yeah, man, I, I hope we can continue to help raise money. I'm ready to do another one for uh, FPC. Let them, let yeah. them stay after it, man. Keep ATF in their place. Yeah, they came down, um, Adam Kraut and Jeff Sylvester, and they did a podcast with the uh, Uncommon Line podcast. What um, is that? They're two. I don't know if are they're police officers. I don't know if that if that's even known, but yeah, it makes souls. sense. They're two police officers. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and they do a podcast out there. It's actually really cool. I got to sit in on it. They asked me a couple of questions. Um, and it's it, they were very, very much trying to show, like, hey, what has FPC done? What are they doing? And where do we go from here? And they did a really good job at it. And Nice. I think, I don't know when it'll come out exactly, but the Unco- Uncommon Line podcast. Well, what's it normally about, their <laughs> podcast, do you know? I, I'm not too familiar with it. Um, I hadn't heard of it until oh, okay. I started talking to them, but they'd be, uh, they have some really off air. They told a lot of really interesting stories um, and <laughs> it, they'd be, it'd be cool to get up here, yeah. get them on it. And uh, you'd, you'd like them. They're cool. Did you guys shoot like any silence 22s or anything while you're down yeah. there? Yeah. Actually, that was another thing too, is we had a, um, we had an El Camino on a, a pack light, a technical solutions yeah. done pack light. <laughs> and uh, the, another one that just blows it. I mean, Silence 22 in general, it's pretty quiet. But that El Camino, or yeah, it was the El Camino that we were using. Insane. People just, they think it's a toy when you shoot it. Like, because yeah. we were shooting BB guns earlier. They have this little, like, flat range with BB guns. You shoot bottles. And everyone, people were genuinely like, is that the, like, who brought the BB gun with them? Like, it is so quiet. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I guess. Had you guys ever heard silence guns before? No. Not Y'all started <coughs> shooting with me? No. No, never. No. It's, it's funny because, you know, at the farm I used to have, like, I had a giant walk-in vault, all my machine guns, and, and so they got pretty spooled. We got to shoot a lot of stuff, blow lots of things up, tanner right and all. <laughs> but I think most of what we do and have fun with when we're not killing something is we still do it now. Every time we're down there, we get Silence 22s out in the backyard. We got a plate rack, and we just sit there and talk shit and bet and shoot silence 22s and it's probably some of the most fun we have oh yeah, yeah we enjoy that. It, it's yeah. great that yeah. is a great thing to do with your buddies oh yeah it cha- yeah. it changes stuff yeah. silence 22s yeah. everybody should have one yeah it, it's so much fun and what even if you're not like guys are holding that the the slide shut just to make it even that much like it's just fun and it's it's relatively cheap now but it's always been super cheap oh, yeah. you can do it all day um you don't have to worry about ear, ear protection or anything like that and just a blast. I mean, yeah. shooting big guns is fun. Shooting full auto is fun. We had a full auto sugar weasel with us. Like, that's all fun. But you were seeing the most like smiles and laughs with just the little twenty twos. Oh yeah, I think it is. I mean, it's oh we ha- we still do it every single time. Yeah, every time. I mean, no matter. I mean that 
vault had millions of dollars of machine guns and stuff in it at the farm. And when we sh- well, that was our go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean it was. Yeah, I mean it, that's. I mean that says a lot because I, I know. It, it's different now. I think 20, 30 years ago, everybody that was kind of into guns as an adult, you had a twenty two as a kid and all. Yeah. But I think it's yeah. changed so much. I think there's a ton of people now that don't get into guns until they're an adult, and you don't think there's a use for a twenty two. Yeah. But it is way more affordable. You can shoot it in more places, and it is silent. Like, it, it is. It's just like playing golf or horseshoes or something. Yeah, when people think about... I don't about know, as far as <laughs> you can... golf. <laughs> well, you can talk and hang <laughs> yeah, out with yeah, your buddies, yeah. and, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it's more of like sharing time together. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you go into silencers thinking about, like we've talked about, like the movie sounds, like the silent guns, yeah. you're going to be a little disappointed, but when you shoot a twenty two yeah. like that, you're like, oh, okay, this oh, is yeah. that sound. Yeah. Like, or go shoot a three oh eight or an AR-15 or something yeah. without ear pro. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Yeah, and then do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know <laughs> what y'all did before before I I moved up there and brought silencers. Uh, a lot, a lot of hearing loss. Yeah. yeah. What? What was that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were the silencer police there too. We're like, if any of you were going to shoot unsuppressed, tell us. We oh. have we have cherry bombs and we have direct thread guns. Like we will put a can on your gun. You will yeah. not shoot unsuppressed. Yeah, that's that's stupid. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't like. It. I told you the last hunt. Like when I went to Africa and I couldn't take a silencer. That's the first time. And since that, you, you were there, that 260, <laughs> that night's 260. Yeah. Oh, my head still hurts from that. Yeah, like three <laughs> shots yeah. and suppressed. It and it's awful. just not even just the sound, but you're feeling the blast too. Like it's a jarring experience. And I, I mean, growing up, I always shot unsuppressed. And I'm like, oh, this is just shooting guns. And then once you get used to shooting suppressed, like it is unbelievable that they are not just an accessory it is not not mandatory right yeah that's that's what a lot of us are saying like it should be mandatory to have a suppressor not only for you but for everyone around you yeah yeah. it is funny if the government wants to stick their old wieners and everything like why don't you do that that's it makes a lot more sense than all the other gun legislation yeah oh it's horrible Uh, yeah i wouldn't i mean i say it all the time i wouldn't even shoot guns if you had there weren't silencers yeah I, I i don't like it no, uh, you know, even with our profession, you know, you're inside a house and you fire one off inside a house. It's uh, we don't run suppressors, right? So. What What do you guys carry as a sidearm? It's a Glock 17. Okay, nine, nine mil. Back to nine mil. Yep. He said they got a a, a slick new taser out. Oh, yeah, the new taser come out, and I didn't yeah. know there were new ones. It's yeah. it's ugly. So like the the second shot, it, what is it like twice it, the voltage? Yeah, it doubles in both. Oh, so they <laughs> so you don't have so, to just so keep no more of that crack head sitting there getting hit six times. Yeah, yeah, it's. <laughs> Do you tase anybody lately? No. Do you tase anybody in general? Like you scared anybody? No. Uh, well, if they got a machete or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, in that case, you gotta. That's when you pull the glock. I was say, at that point, yeah. you shoot them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah, but I, I'm just wondering, like, what is the instance where you get? Nervous. If so, if you can't see something, somebody can have a weapon. Yeah, like we go into a house looking for a, somebody in there. We know for a fact they've they're armed or have been armed, and you look at their criminal history, and it'll tell you the. But yeah, it's 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 nerve wracking. Yeah, because you're going in, you're opening doors, it's closed, and you never know what's on the other side. Yeah. Are you ever nervous when you know somebody doesn't have a weapon and they're like, "Fuck you, man, get out of my way"? They bow up to you. Uh, not, not re- it's rarely. Yeah, I, I can't imagine if I were your size <laughs> and my attitude. Oh, no, I would invite it. Yeah. I'd be like, you should run. Have you ever met somebody that's uh, in that situation that's your size? Or yeah. Big? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. I was gonna say someday there's gotta there's gotta be some six oh, eight yeah, dude. Oh yeah, we'd run across them every once in a while. That's when you tase them. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I like to wrestle. So. <laughs> <laughs> wrestle. <Yeah. laughs> I do not want to wrestle you. Okay, no. just for the record. Um, <laughs> Although he, he tries to all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's such a sweetie. I, I feel like he's not gonna hurt me. <laughs> um. <laughs> It, it's interesting all the different types of hunting, like what you guys did there, and then it, it's funny because most of what we do, like we'll deer hunt. Then we get so lazy with the pigs now. Yeah. It's like mm. deer it's hunting, but it's like you just, you know, you, you, we get the cell camera pick, 
you cruise over there, you creep in there, and then it's like shit is on when we see pigs. It's yeah. like you know, Scorpion King chasing them, <laughs> me and Judson shooting them. It's 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 kind of exciting because it's like a sneak up ambush ah! yeah, yeah. for like ten seconds, and then yeah. Well, it's cool that there's if you want to get into hunting and you haven't hunted before, there is every level of it for you. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. you can, there's the level of like the Steve Rinellas and the Adam Green trees that'll. That'll just be by themselves for 28 days and shoot an elk and quarter it and pack it out four miles each way four times. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to a high fence area or you can just there's every you can go in your backyard. There's every level for anyone that wants to get into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it doesn't need backyard. to be big, expensive things. You can go shoot. Go shoot ducks. Go shoot squirrels. Go shoot whatever. Yeah. Yeah. All that's fun. We've done all that. It's all fun. Even the groundhogs, man, that's. Yeah, I think we've fun. had some of the best times even oh. shooting groundhogs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're right. There is there is some kind of hunting everywhere, and it's just a great experience. Yeah. And, I mean, we, we didn't really cover it with Jason Vincent, but it's so easy to track that hunters, at least in this country, and I'm sure elsewhere, but hunters contribute directly more for the conservation of wildlife and habitat than any other organization in oh, the world. Oh, it's like 90% yeah. of it. Yeah, and it's yeah. so... It's cool that the stigma is kind of slowly going away. Um, I don't think it was ever necessarily like taboo for people to hunt, but there's always been the yeah, I'm just not into hunting. But now that people are understanding that it's it's good for the population, I think it's it's opening up to more people now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably just like gun ownership now. That's all changing. But hunting, you know, it's just I think relatively recently where it's become maybe it's social media people get like uh, uh, aggressively against hunting right. that are just ignorant and don't understand because you know when My mike murphy from griffin and howe talking about you know when griffin and howe was a big company back in the day building you know hunting rifles for you know their guns were expensive it was a, a ton of celebrities and movie stars were their clients you know yeah. they would be the ones that would go on the african yeah, safaris it's the thing to do who, who now is you know the biggest proponent of it or is that what Oh, you're saying the, 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 the Hollywood? Yeah they're, yeah, they're against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so against it. Did you see, um, we haven't even got it going yet, but the yeah. video game? Yeah, shout insane. out to him, man. It's huge. So that's just like a fan had that done for us and sent it to us for the podcast room. That's insane. We have the small one at the shop, and I, that's like a normal size one, but this one is huge. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> I think there's 700 and something games on it. Crazy. So some skate, some skateboard wow. games. I'm gonna get after it. I yeah. know it's gonna be a, a whole lot of me and Yvonne in here till two in the morning, yelling at each other and me, me dominating. Yeah. Did you, and we are getting all these refreshing drinks now. So did you see this ranch water? So this is you probably like. Well, is that the one Thomas would like this? It's a hard seltzer, but this one's like jalapeno agave. Or is something? that the one with tequila in it? <laughs> I don't know. Have my glass on. People were. I heard people talking about ranch water in Texas this weekend, and it's just like... That's pretty delicious and refreshing. That's a good summer drink. Tequila yeah. is agave. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's what he said. Is it? I was thinking... Yeah, so agave and natural you. lime juice. <coughs> yeah, yeah, so that's what they're saying. It's like tequila Roots and water, the and they just call it ranch water, but... Whatever, man. It's good. But people said they liked it. I'm going to try this one, too. What is this? So this was weird. Maui Brewing Company, pineapple, mm. chai chai. I don't know if that's the correct way to say that, but nitro golden ale. You gave some of that to Kimmy the other day, and she loves it. Oh, she said it was good? Oh, yeah. So, all right, so it's pretty girly, too, probably, then. <laughs> oh, you'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, but she, like, she, like... You want an ass whipping before you go back to Georgia? <laughs> a small town, a fresh off a cop's ass, <laughs> making me homesick. <laughs> don't get on my porch, either. <laughs> no, believe me. I'll, I'll inspect them all now before I walk up. Oh. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> mm. Mm. I don't like that one. <laughs> Kim, Kimmy's taste buds are broken. <laughs> mm. But thank you for sending it. I love trying yeah. new stuff. I'm glad Kimmy likes it. Yeah, and it's, it never goes to waste. Someone likes it. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, alcoholics at the shop. Somebody's yeah. going to drink <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. Old, you remember JYD? Junkyard Dog? Oh, yeah. Tragic story with him, like most wrestlers. He died in a car accident going to his daughter's high school graduation. Mm -hmm. I love Junkyard Dog. Remember he had thump across the back of his yeah. trunks? He'd do that 
almost the Elvis dance with his knees. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. Th- this little, well, we can't call him an action figure because he doesn't move, but I ain't calling right. him a doll. But had a collar with a chain on yeah. it. Remember oh, he had yeah. a huge chain. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, see, I found these in the stuff from Georgia, too. I, I, I don't know. I got these when I was like 10, 10 or 12 years old. <laughs> I have the Hulk Hogan one. Um, Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorff, George the Animal Steel, Jesse the Body Ventura. So, hmm. yeah. It ain't too late. I still think you could get into the senior division of WWF. Yeah, um, I can't go up to Mud Creek up there. <laughs> oh, is that the place <laughs> yeah, in that's, Georgia? That's pretty, yeah, close <laughs> yeah. to the house. Dude, I remember I was getting my oil changed <laughs> somewhere around there, I guess. And uh, it's the one at that old school or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this is like some bootleg, like backcountry Georgia. But it's televised somewhere. Like yeah, on, it is. On the local it, cable. I was going to say the local network. Yeah. Or whatever. yeah. And it's in like some high school from the 50s probably in their gymnasium. They have it like every Saturday or whatever. Getting my oil changed. This kid comes up to me and he's like, he sees the tag, said bald one on it or something. He's like, hey, you know, like I didn't know what it was called, Mud Creek or whatever. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, you live up there? I said, well, yeah, my place isn't far from there. And he goes, I'm like whatever it was, like, you know, too cold Morocco or something. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, I'm a wrestler. And he's like, Tommy size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, you must be one of those high flyers. <laughs> yeah. Like, no JYD. But, um, yeah. Yeah, we got... So we got all kinds of alcohol this week. Yeah. A giant freaking arcade game. So shout out to that guy. We got to hook him up with something. That's incredible. Yeah, that's nice. Um, did you see yeah. the the skateboard yeah. with the LEDs? Yeah, so when it came in, it's insane. Yeah, so so I thought the guy made it, but um and I, I don't know. I, I gotta figure this out. If I should call people out and say thank you to them. But some people they don't they don't want us to. Right. So I'm like trying to respect everyone's privacy, not trying to be inconsiderate. This guy, well, I think he might have sent us this, actually. Um, but he sent us that skateboard, and I thought he made it. But that's a guy, uh, th- there's a guy online that makes, like, all these custom cutout skateboards like that. So he sent him the artwork and all and had him do it. And uh, probably like that, Judson. That's Hulk Hogan or Ronald McDonald's colors there. But, yeah, it's got the LED oh, in the dude. back of it that glows all the different colors. That's so awesome. I mean, that's also one of the coolest gifts next to that creepy-ass mask yeah. that... Jay got us. Yeah, people asked me about that at the ranch, and I, I felt uncomfortable. Ooh, I should have made you it. guys take it. And the only way you could go is if you wore it when you shot. <laughs> our, our plane would have crashed. Or something. <laughs> that thing is terrible. But, but it kept you from getting seasick there. That's little, true. Yeah, no. ca- yeah. Captain Jay. Honestly, maybe that's what it was. It was mad that I left its like its uh, area. Uh, but uh. then I I shot Satan in in Texas and freed all the souls that were. Sold yeah. to it. Yeah, you, you, you might have done some good. Honestly, but the devil doesn't seem that tough. Like, he lost, I said it yesterday, he lost his golden fiddle to some redneck in Georgia, and then he goes to Texas to try yeah. to do some bad and get shot in the back of the squash by me. This asshole shoots one animal, now all of a sudden he's challenging the devil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no, no <laughs> challenge. I, I took him out. I don't, I don't know, man. You call me a pussy, I think it's a challenge. It, <laughs> it's a good thing he has access to a fix. He may win. That's yeah, true. You yeah, you might. You yeah. might. Yeah. Any caliber. Any yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that other yeah. skateboard also, it's got a, oh, that's got the mini fix on it. Yeah, I like that one. Somebody yeah, did the mini, mini cool. fix SD. Yeah, and he did some custom, uh, oh, is it the SD? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, he put the SD front end on it. Oh, nice. And then said, like, you need to do this. He He's not wrong. Yeah. Uh, and he sent custom grip tape, too, that had cues on it. That's oh, that's cool. right. I do remember yeah. that. Yeah, we got some good stuff. Yeah, in people here. sent cool stuff. Got some hats from our, our buddy this week and his dog. Oh, did you see? I don't want to say their names, but um, his daughter sent me this little uh, stuffed animal note, and she she drew me and her both wearing <laughs> COVID mask. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's her artwork on the fridge yep. too. Yeah, he's doing a good job with his kids. Yeah, they're nice. He's a guy where on um, Instagram one night is like, "Give me a free sugar weasel," and I said, "Have your your mom, your wife." A high school teacher and your kids send me a letter of recommendation. Yeah, and he did it. Yeah, <laughs> they all sent him. <laughs> Except his, his his daughter's young, so she sent me a video saying yeah. he was like the greatest dad and did all this stuff with her. <laughs> and so we gave him we gave him a sugar weasel. It's awesome. So now he sends us all kinds of cool stuff yeah. all the time. Yeah. So these hats are nice. He's active. He's always always a, in support of what we're doing. What kind of stories we got, guys? Oh, you made notes because I forgot. Uh, I got notes. Guy. I got stories about y'all. I was going to give y'all an opportunity to call me out. 
Oh, you're such an awesome guy. <laughs> 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 Nothing I, bad to say I, here, I, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys. Prick. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so full of it. Let me get my little glasses on. Let's see. What about? Oh, about you. Like, what about when we went hunting last year? At the house, we we leave and go. It's about a mile from the house. Oh man. We get out. And <laughs> we walk down this little dirt road a little ways, you know, to to get to where we're going to hunt look, looking over some fields and we get about 20 foot from the excursion Kevin's like Chad I said yeah I said, we gotta go back to the house I said why he says I forgot my boots I got my slippers on <laughs> <laughs> I did I even I think I had like my tripod because oh, we were yeah. going to stand oh, yeah. by the field yeah. and my gun and everything, everything on, and had my my house yeah, my house slippers on. on. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I, I snapped man. a piece. It was dark, but I said the flash. It brought it brought out the, the <laughs> yeah. those fancy slippers. <laughs> did you run them or did you get the boots? No, nah, we yeah, ran them back. Yeah, we, yeah, we ran them. Yeah, we went down. We just have to go a See, few hundred you, yards. You got a here. picture of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I sent it to you. Uh, yeah. All right, we'll post it. I ain't afraid. I yeah, that that happens like every time with me. Something stupid. I yeah. had a question for Chad, actually. What are you um, saying yeah, about? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, like that gate tried to whoop you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the Irvin family, those assholes do not know how to put a gate up. Every one of them, at every one of their fields, is like jacked up some jabroni put it up. And, oh, man, I was holding a gun and closed one, I don't know, not that long ago at night. And it came off the hinge and flipped backwards <laughs> and almost catapulted me with my gun. I was so mad. I was like, fuck the bourbons. I'm not putting the gate back. It almost killed me. They need to fix this shit every gate we go to. No, I was very entitled. And I was just got back in the truck. And Chad's like, you got to fix the gate. <laughs> The bad, the bad thing is that was the second time that night it had whooped him. Oh, no, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause yeah, don't going, forget go, that part. Yeah, going uh-huh. in, it threw you over the top, almost <laughs> threw you over the top of it out in the middle of the field. And, <laughs> and uh, was so mad. And then we shot a pig and had to, went back to the house and got got the girls and came back over there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. they were there and laughing at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, I had a. Uh, now I'm not sure if you remember Chad, but I believe right where. We are right now. There was a certain boulder that that uh, tried to take your car out. <laughs> oh, Chad. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, yeah. What that's happened with that? I'm gonna, him, I'm, gonna I'm gonna carve my name in that. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kevin scared me and I punched it. Yeah, yeah. He's like rock, and I'm like, ah. yeah. Okay. Whenever it happened, Nailed Kevin it. immediately texted the entire <laughs> shop. <and> said, <laughs> <laughs> everyone texts Chad. That's what, about that's what that <laughs> asshole does, <laughs> man. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, Never. he's the worst because I would not normally do those sorts of uh, things. No, no. But no. yeah, we're pulling out of the driveway. He had his brand new truck, and it's a big ass rock the size of a car out yeah. there. You hard see to miss. It. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to miss. No, it's not. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's hard to dead center, and that's what and, I did. And I said, he's going towards. It. I can tell he's not paying. I'm like, rock, and he sped up, and we <laughs> launched it, <laughs> and it caved the whole front of his truck in. It was. It, oh, he was. He was madder. Then when he scorpion kinged it, yeah, yeah. Asked yeah. Him if he was all yeah. right. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was great. Yeah, we immediately got a text and that said everyone asked Chad what happened to his truck. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. And then I, I immediately got started getting texts. What, what, what happened? What yeah. happened? What's going on? So, that's buddies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, don't think he has not looked up every video he has of dumb shit I've done for the last ten years and shown Ivanka. Nah. Ninety percent of the time, if I take a photo I, for him, I'll send it to him, and I delete it off my phone. He is such and, a liar. Yeah. But <laughs> we were in Michigan. We went to when Mitch was oh, first yeah. coming out. And and, uh, a little Mitch, or yeah, yeah, little Mitch, yeah. And so uh, they were nice enough to call me and say, "Hey, you know, let's meet us up in in Michigan." Well, well let me preface this. This is um, so our engineer, who had been Ethan's intern in college. He graduated, came to work for Ethan at SIG, yep. worked there three months, and SIG had a massive layoff. He got laid off. He went to Daniel Defense. And we started Q. He came to work for us. Their, uh, their family farmed like what, 2,500 acres or something. It's huge. Well, that piece, but I think they're, what are they, the, like the, the largest, largest landowners or something? Something like or that in the farm, county yeah, of Michigan. There. So anyway, so we, we get there, and, and Mitch has told us about, he, they have a pond, and they have a a <sighs> Literally a power pole <laughs> standing up, leaning over the pond. <laughs> He's seen the pictures. <laughs> and, uh, and with a rope tied to the top of it. I mean, this is years ago at this point. He's still showing people the video this, on his phone. I found it, yeah. I found, yeah. It. Yeah. I found it. So 
it's like you go up like uh, probably 20, 25 feet up, up a ladder and get on this little bitty platform and you have that rope. Well, the rope, you have to jump up in the air and put your feet around the rope to catch the knot on the bottom. Right. There's no knots for your hands. And if you miss that knot, which Kevin did, um, <laughs> then you, you slide down yeah. the rope. Yeah, so he had like second degree This burns. was not OSHA approved. <laughs> no, no, this is this is country living. So at its finest, I mean, so he literally, he, I mean, he, he successfully held on until the end, but he slid down about four yeah. foot of rope. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. so he had like second degree burns and... And so I got photos of him laying on the table and the video. <laughs> Mitch is holding his hand. Any, oh, yeah, it, it, so my my hands were completely burned. It was so painful, and I'm yeah. not all that tough. Yeah. So so then we get back to the house, and me and Ethan, we're literally crying. We feel so bad for him. Uh, no, Everybody but Chad had been drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. So uh, yeah. me and Ethan were having a ball, and Mitch's mom, she's a nurse, and she's so tender hearted. Oh, she's, she's shout like out loving little Patty. Him. Yeah, oh, little yeah. Patty, man. She was like, like oh no, and, and and me and Ethan were saying bad things to him and stuff, and we were crying, <laughs> and it was laughing so hard, and uh, you know, and Patty's getting on to us for doing that, and and Big Tim, he's like. Here Mitch's go. dad he, is, yeah, a, is yeah. about like Judson. Yeah, he's a big guy. <laughs> and he, he's feeding him Jack Daniels. Here, take some more medicine. Those you are know. good people. Uh, yeah, yeah, and he's like, oh, oh, you know, his hands out and all. But it, it did. It was it, it was it was pretty bad burn. So. Yeah. so it's me in my underwear getting wrecked and then <laughs> yeah. me laying on a, a, a counter in a kitchen. Getting wrecked. Crying like yeah. a baby with yeah. Mitch's mom doctoring my hands and his, his dad pouring Jack Daniels down my throat. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it, so it's it's it was good humiliating, time. but it was so, so awesome. It, it was. Yeah, it was I, I'll never forget it. That's one story I'll never forget. I, will <laughs> I know, because you tell everyone. Well, I told him, I said, I advised <laughs> against it. I was the voice of reason that day. It was before I started my running career. He did. He did. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah think before you, you turned into the dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, th- I think you might have waited till tomorrow. I mean, you hadn't drank a lot, though. You would probably drink a lot. Eight or ten a piece. I, mean, I hadn't drank enough for it not to hurt. I tell no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good one. But <sighs> so many yeah. of those with me. You have a guy. You guys aren't as mean as me because man, no. I tell all the stories. Yeah, we well, like, so selectively forget them because we're sort of embarrassed that we were involved we, in some <laughs> of them. So. We, we might need them again. <laughs> yeah, you never know. When. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, another thing I've learned from you guys and uh, being from the city and buying a place in the country and, you know, adapting to that lifestyle is every country boy needs a winch. That's what I figured out. Especially if you're in the vehicle with Kevin. <laughs> How do y'all not have winches? We know where to drive. We don't go in those places. Like, really, in, in your defense, the the play, mountain you own land on was called Soapstone for a reason. Yeah. You, when it rains, you can't stand up on it and take jeeps off the edge of the bluffs like. Oh, you I do. can, I can. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. you just gotta have a beachy with a tractor come get you. That's true. Yep. Um. <laughs> so, Jay Thomas. Yes, how sir. about this hours north concert? Oh yeah, you were there. I want to say, I had confidence it would be a good time. Three, maybe five times better than I anticipated. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. She totally be rock stars. You guys are wasting your talents with us. I know. What are y'all doing? Just trying to make it. Man, no, we were that, we were stoked to see you. We great time. Look at we, he, he blushed when you said that. I know. Both of them did. Thomas. I know because I'm not even lying. They were yeah. wonderful. Day Definitely. of, we were wondering. We're like, he's not coming. Why did you keep saying that? It's too good to be true. It felt that that I wasn't going to show up. What 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 the hell, man? Because we didn't want to get our hopes up. Yeah. We didn't want. We didn't want uh, to be like, oh, he's coming, and then you not right. to come for whatever reason, and then we'd be bummed out. But yeah. you came, and we were stoked about it. Yeah. I told you all, the only thing would have been something we wanted the kids. Right. And I even made Aiden drive, drive to himself Woodward. to Woodward so that I could come see you guys. Yeah. Well, we appreciated it. We were stoked to see you. Oh. Ivana seemed like she had a good time. She had a great time. Yeah. A wonderful time. And the next day, she got me texting Tommy asking, like, name of different songs <laughs> and stuff so we could download it. Looking for yeah. lyrics. Because you can totally understand what he's saying. Uh, when he sings in British, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a great time. You guys you guys did awesome. I can't wait to see the next show. Thank you, yeah. That, that was, was our first one back in like a year and a half. Well, we or need so. to have a party where you guys play then. 
Yeah. The the one in October is the one to go to. That's like an actual show show at like an actual rock club um, at the Portland House of Music. That's the oh, one. Oh, yeah. This last one was all right. Like, you, I'm glad you had a good time, but we all got off the stage. Like, eesh, well, we kind of fell apart yeah. at, the, at the end there. We It wasn't our finest work, but yeah. uh, we'll be, Jay. we're going to be ready to roll. I mean, I was October. fucking smacking the whole time, but no, no, but no it was... It was Tommy lost confidence when he broke a string on his guitar. Yeah, two songs in smokes a string, which is par for the course. Yeah, but I will say that normally, uh, don't during sound check, like he sound checks his backup too, his backup guitar, and I, we just didn't do that this time, so it still sounded fine. Wh- why? Why don't you have two of the same guitar if that happens? Guitars are expensive. It's it's a financial thing. Yeah, it's just guitars are expensive. How much is that when you normally play? The one that I have is like seven hundred fifty bucks. All right. Yeah, but on top of all our other gear, it's fucking crazy. Well, y- you could get another job working part time to help the band out. Need yeah, to. we're going to McDonald's. Yeah. All right, so Flying. I'm gonna um. All right, so I'm uh, I'm gonna buy you a backup guitar. No, 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 no. I want a I want a cinema camera for Q. That's what I want. <laughs> I'm gonna buy anything. Hey, this isn't a, a one or the other. <laughs> I, I want to support the band. You know, yeah. I'm hoping I'll, you know, at some point I'll be able to get up there and we, we can, um, we can do a duet. Then uh, y'all's then islands in the stream, maybe. Islands in the stream. All right, I'm down. So or, or, order you a backup guitar. I don't want you falling apart, getting all nervous again. Have a backup. <laughs> that actually, I got it. it. Actually, crushed me. Like I went because especially the um, the song. You had all kinds of girls there. Like I oh, thought no. you were gonna get panties Ooh. thrown at you. Uh, the <laughs> song, the song after my guitar broke, is meant specifically for that acoustic guitar. Yeah, and playing it. Turbulence. On, no, uh, it's called "Be Love." It's right after Turbulence. I broke my string during Turbulence. And Third I song. Through. It'll get you. Yeah. Not the second. Um, song. Yeah. And then the song after that is meant for an acoustic guitar, and I had to play it on an electric guitar, and it was garbage. And I just all, all right, if you're not gonna my steam like just if you're not gonna order it, then you get me the information. I'll order it for him. Right. We'll get him a little gift. We brought one up from Georgia. He can use. Oh, it's very nice, too, actually. Oh, yeah. it's yeah, we'll give it to him. It's nice. I'm not going to play it. Yeah, all right. So we got we got to get a camera and a guitar. Yep. So Papa needs to make $3,250 <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. We'll make that happen. All right. Is it well, and I think we're going to need to get Chad a winch. He got a city truck now. <laughs> he ain't in that country. So we got a big old dad. All right, so four grand. I got to figure out four grand. Four. <laughs> um, skid plate on the front. Of it. Yeah, that'll work, too. <laughs> Man. I, you know, that's one thing that Wyoming showed me was how much I missed the farm. Yeah. We had that shooting range at the farm, like the the 100 meter range yeah. was the best range I've ever seen. Yeah. Awesome. It was good. I miss it so much. We blew so much. You remember the first time we shot Tannerite? <laughs> mm. Yeah. The one we let, Aiden, let Aiden shoot. Yeah. Uh, so Aiden, God, he's little. So when he's like mm. probably six, seven years old, We'd always let him blow up Tannerite. Like we, we'd, because I'd get cars for like a hundred bucks, right? Or free refrigerators or ovens or hot water heaters. We'd the beach, he'd haul them out to the range, get them set up. We'd pack them with Tannerite. Oh, we had some good times. That was did we do that before? Did we do the Beaver Dam at our place first? Oh, that was pretty awesome. I don't, the Beaver Dams. Yeah, great. <laughs> There was some experimentation yeah. went on with the beaver oh, dams. Yeah. We we almost had some mishaps. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, country living is so great. That's like when I started taking Ivana to the country, and she's like, oh, never cool. been, you know, always yeah. lived in a city. She's like, what are we going to do? I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> she's like, for five days, what are we going to do? And I was like, holy shit, everything, whatever we want to do. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and, and she's in love with oh, it. Oh, yeah. She, she, yeah, she had never seen a four-wheeler. Or, and we were like, I mean, growing up there, you just, you just expect everybody's the experienced it at least. And, oh, she was like, term we use back home is like a Japanese tourist. She would pop, 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 just pick photos everywhere. <laughs> no offense, yeah. Japanese, but anyway. Yeah, <laughs> or <she> tourist. <laughs> yeah, or tourist. Uh, but uh, well, she was kind of a foreign yeah, tourist. She, <laughs> yeah, she was, she was, yeah. So, yeah, she was just photos everywhere. So it, it was awesome to see someone come in and really appreciate that that slower pace of living, I guess you'd say. So, uh, But it is beautiful there and so much stuff to do. So, I mean, so much stuff to do that, like, it's not city related, you know. Go down the creek, run through five hundred rounds <laughs> <laughs> subsonic <laughs> on with a mini fix like you would do. Yeah. So that's what she does. She likes to sit in a chair, set up the tripod, the mini fix, and she just yeah. shoots while I reload her magazines. Yeah. yeah. But man, when we started doing yeah, the beaver dam stuff, 
So we're like, I don't know. How big is that beaver dam? Like, how much tannerite do we need? Uh, it says we probably need about this much, so we should probably triple that. Yeah. Yeah, well, the first one we did was a, a 10 or 15-pound fire extinguisher that I had. It was bad. I took the top off, and we packed it. And that's when you shot with that... Uh, <laughs> The, oh, oh, the, the Mark. You appreciate Mark. this, the Mark Eleven. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. So, yeah, and, and it like, oh crap, that didn't do anything, you know. But it blew debris over us, and we were over a hundred yards away. Yeah, I mean, big sticks yeah. and stuff yeah, hitting yeah. us. Yeah. So, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, we we do the Tannerite, and I mean, in the beginning, you know, I'd usually use silencers. Just we were shooting belt feds, and people sometimes around would call the police. But then once I got to know them, you know, in the country, small town, become friends with the sheriff, and it's like when they realize you're not breaking the law, yeah, they don't care. But all oh, the Tannerite sometimes in the valley yeah. where we do the the beaver dams, we go a little overboard, like super mm-hmm. redneck on it, and you know it make people's uh, like pictures fall yeah, off the wall and so houses. oh they would get hot <laughs> they would get hot yeah we did we got some calls about that the neighbor which is like i don't know three quarters of miles upstream for us, from us called just cussing you know my yeah, yeah. photos are falling off my wall you're gonna place my photos i'm like put them up better yeah. but, <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, yeah people exactly. don't yeah they don't realize that like out in the country you generally don't have noise ordinance and stuff like that so if you're not messing up somebody's property breaking a law like you can do whatever you want that was one of the the great things i found y- y- you know like the best thing that happened to the farm was you know the memories of my kids and the friends that i made but the uh the freedom that you have if you grow up in the city in an urban area and then you get a big chunk of land mm. the freedom that you have oh, to yeah. do whatever the hell you want mm-hmm. yeah and like we would just like ride dirt bikes you could race them at night we would race the jeeps all the way the one in the property and back you know <laughs> wear night vision do whatever or you blow up beaver dams or you get a car for a 100 bucks and you blow it up oh we had the greatest times oh, yeah those were good times i miss all that remember that <laughs> remember that three count we had pig hunting that time with uh judson who failed first grade math apparently oh, yeah <laughs> Three, three, one that you go on yeah. two three i can't count one bang <laughs> yeah he didn't even get the e out and i was shot <laughs> Fucked us all. What's up, Judson? Yeah, I, I he shot. I, he shot at least the half a pound of bacon. Yeah, yeah. he could have. It could have hit up under that skate. It was a good shot. It was, it was a little pig. Oh no! Blast it right in the eyeball. It was, on it, one. It was sort of my fault because I had a laser, a green laser on, <laughs> and that's what I was going to. Well, I think I was going to try to light every illuminate up with that because it was. It would open up a little bit, and all, all we had then was. Green lights, or we even had white. We had white lights then, yeah. I guess. And I had bought a green laser, and uh, we didn't have thermals or anything. Mm-mm. No, not on the guns. Uh, huh. We had the handheld. We knew they were there, but uh, I wasn't carrying my weight then. No, no, you, you stepped up in the last few years. But anyway, yeah. So it, when I said one, I, I cut that green light on so the <laughs> laser on where I would be ready because I had to mash a button. And buddy, that means was, press up here. Yeah, yeah mash press. press. I had to stick my finger on a button. But, yeah, so as soon as that laser came on, I mean, it was less than half a second. <laughs> he had shot the pig that in the eye. That means second. So. <laughs> yeah, shot yeah. it right in the eye. And well, did you, just, did you just think it was bigger because you were cranked down to 14? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's oh, a monster. You are using that Johnny gun, wasn't you? Yeah, I Kevin's was. Johnny gun. The, oh, oh, sure yeah. Yeah. The Nevesky, the 223. Mm-hmm. That thing yeah. killed some pigs. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that night you shot that one. We didn't even have a lot. I oh mean, yeah, it was out in the in the woods, and it's a good Kevin story. Where I it's like shot it in the dark, yeah. Uh, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> we had a handheld, and and so he had the he had his Johnny gun. And he's like he'd look, he'd hold the gun, hand me the thermal, I'd hand it back, and he'd look again. I'd done that about three times. Next thing you know, pow! The pig starts squealing, run about fifty yards, fell over dead. <laughs> so I mean, it was what forty fifty yards out from wow. us too. Yeah. yeah, it was impressive. Yeah. Yeah, that's all we had to work with. So I was having to like look with the thermal and look at all the foliage and see right. where the pig was, and then uh, like let my eyes acclimate to the yeah. darkness, and I could see the foliage. And I said, I, "We never saw the pig mm-hmm. until it's dead." Yeah, no. that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, redneck ingenuity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, that way. Well, that's probably yeah, we were doing three hundred blackout then. You've been spoiled. Chad has probably shot more thing. I don't know if you shot more than me, but probably not far behind. More animals with 300 blackout than most people. 
Yeah, like uh, Oppress would. He oh, that well. Stuff. Oh, yeah. That dude yeah. hammers them. He hammers that stuff. What's his yeah. Is his name Mike? Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike yeah, Presswood. Man, shout out yeah. to him. Yeah, he slays some pigs. Yes, yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he's oh. probably killed more. He's got a sugar sure weasel. He's killed more in, in the fix, too, than, than most people. He has a very target-rich environment. We need to get him a honey badger. Yeah, maybe, Pres- maybe we'll cool. give Jay's yeah, to he him. Wants, he wants to come out and visit. <laughs> yeah, Presswood's cool. We should because, you know, people that actually shoot stuff a lot, just knowing how he does it and what equipment he uses and, oh, like, yeah. daytime optics and then nighttime, what he prefers. You know, because that's where I've always put a lot of confidence in when Todd Huey with the optics and the thermal because he also shoots so many. Yeah. The practical experience. Chad, do you use any of the the weapon-mounted thermals, like the the Pulsars or anything? Yeah, we've got a Reap IR now. Oh, yeah. I love that. that yeah. At first, I didn't like it because... I was accustomed to the green light and had right. the wide field he, of view. He doesn't like change. Yeah, yeah. I don't like I don't deal with change we'll well. So, we'll stay. but I adapted well. Yeah. Uh, to that, yeah, that the repower is awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's funny because I had you know my apartment now. Their place I had thermals down there all the time. Right. He, he wouldn't even use them. And now, man, I like the green light. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thermal. Yeah. I need I need a field of view. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, will you? But you can see everything. Will you handheld and then just get on them with mm-hmm. the? Yeah. And I still use the handheld uh, to. To locate and right. once I, once we locate, then it's just easier to then hold yeah. the, the rifle out. So, yeah, locate with handheld and then then get ready and go yeah. in that way. So we like to in the fields. I, we like to get twenty or thirty yards from them just right. for the excitement. Uh, you know, sometimes you can't, but uh, I, we've shot them. I've shot them out to 150, 175 probably with yeah. the reap. So yeah, it's it's awesome. And so do those have the? I know you have one, but do they have the? I guess what the zoomed in screen up at the top too. Like some of those pulsars, you'll have your your just regular objective, and then they'll have a smaller no. zoomed in. No. no, it's got zoom. I, I don't love using the zoom a lot unless I have no. to. Yeah, you just no. lose so much resolution. Right. Yeah. And field of view. Yeah. Yeah. What um, what'd you think about shooting that eight six in Wyoming? Oh man, that thing. I can't. I can't wait to. I can't wait to run one of those through a pig and see what it does. That's. Oh, that's man. awesome. It is so massive. Projectile going down range, it's 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 going to be something else. I mean, d- even being able to hear impact with subsonic at a thousand yards. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like waiting, it. waiting, having the patience. Someone just blew up a beaver dam. Yeah, I think so. Was it that, or was that the train? Train, 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 train hooking connecting. Up. I think so. Yeah. Do you think that people will once it's becoming readily available and people get a hold of eight six? Do you think once people get it in the U.S. at least they'll ever Shoot like hunt with anything else? Yes, yeah, some. I believe some will because I mean, like for range, you you're gonna right. have to be a pretty good shot, um, which it will do it because we did. But you gonna have to you <coughs> have to know your stuff yeah. to, to shoot out past about 500. But still, most shots aren't even that far. Yeah, so I mean, it's not. rare to shoot something that far. Yeah. I, I don't. I think you know. Of course, I'll reserve the right to change my mind. But the way I see it right now is, if it's inside, you know, 100, 150, 300 blackout, but. Eight six kill stuff better. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and I think supersonic. You're gonna have you know five six hundred yards. There's really no sense in using anything no. else. I don't think if you've got your dope. I yeah. mean, I think it's gonna be gnarly on animals. Like I've shot. Well, I've, you know, I've shot some animals with it already. But but I'm excited. You know, Ethan was here this morning before we started the podcast and talking over. Well, he brought some cool stuff actually. So, you know what this is. No, I do not. So this is uh, some 8.6 for me to test today that is for an 8-inch barrel specifically. So it's loaded to give us the exit pressure, th- the same as we had out of the 12.5-inch barrel with a 300-gram uh, 300 gram burger. Mm. Um, so subsonic load, that will be – oh, it was so quiet out. Oh. And yeah, it was. Man, this subsonic – but, you know, it's a thing, like, suiting stuff to barrel wings. And when Ethan and I were talking this morning, you know, when I was a kid and got into guns, so pro- kid like your age, maybe a little younger, um, the Remington 700, even the tactical, like the police versions, Judson, mm-hmm. you know, they were all 308, 24, 26-inch barrel. There was nothing shorter. Mm-hmm. So seeing barrels get shorter now. <laughs> but if you want a subsonic load, and, and one thing that's interesting is like Hornady and other companies probably aren't going to do barrel length specific because it's just so many skews. So when you get somebody like uh, David Stark at Discrete Ballistics, he maybe can afford to do it. And what I'm saying is have a subsonic load 
for 16 inch, one for 12 and a half, and one for 8 inch. Because, you know, if you have it specifically, you want a thousand feet a second out of an 8 inch barrel, out of 12 and a half, it's going to go supersonic. Right. Um, so Ethan did one specifically for the 8 inch, which I'm excited about because Chad and I out in Wyoming, all, you know, we shot, I don't know, like a thousand rounds. We shot so much ammo out of a bolt gun uh, in that two weeks. And, Super and subsonic, but it, all the ammo was loaded for 12 and a half inch. And we were right there borderline because we were having some that was going supersonic. Yeah. So, you know, we're just trying to figure out the loads and everything. But he brought me this, but this is exciting. Whoa. Have you seen this? So, I have not. So this, this is the eight and a half inch barrel. So. It just looks like a mini fix. Yeah. I mean, basically, it's an inch longer than a mini fix. Um and so I got subsonic and supersonic designed for this now, loaded for it, that I'm going to go try. But I, I don't know the overall length right there, but that's probably 17 inches or so if I take the silencer right. off. The gun weighs nothing. And, you know, we might even be able to go, uh, you know, thinking about it like the, the Sig Rattler, where that gun is very popular commercially. And people don't understand, like, we were at Sig while that was going on. And that gun was originally designed for a specific customer for a glove box. Right. And it's, it's designed to do everything inside of 25 meters. But most people commercially go to the range of shooting at 25 meters, no big deal. Yeah. But we could do ammo for this 8.6 where it's all super and subsonic. is designed for the 8-inch barrel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we're trying to figure it out now. Do we go 8 inches uh, and do ammo for it, loads for it. Twelve and a half, we're definitely going to do in sixteen. But this could. Well, you imagine going on an elk hunt and packing that yeah. little thing yeah. in. Uh, yeah, Justin's been on a, on some elk hunts yeah, and packed the big stuff in. I mean, oh, that would kill be, you. That, that'll fit in a backpack. Yeah, I mean, because especially you know when the elk, if you got to make a long shot, you want a longer barrel. But tons of the shots are in the timber, yeah. so you're shooting inside a hundred meters, sometimes fifty meters. If this proves to be almost as capable as a 12 and a half, if you have the right barreling, oh, my God, there's nothing I wouldn't shoot with yeah. this. And you yeah. got a tiny little gun. And two, barrel length sometimes, too. A lot of the, yeah, not only your length and is it cumbersome, but a lot of your weight in a lot of guns is in the barrel. It's, yeah. it's one of the heaviest, part, the heaviest part of the gun, generally. Um, so this is pretty exciting, like a... Uh, the fix an eight six like the super micro and like this and I think Ethan's even going to try some six inch barrels. <laughs> um, so we're kind of working on all that now. But sixteen's mandatory. Twelve and a half, kind of like three hundred blackout. That's what we're designing everything for right now. Yeah. Um, and and I would be comfortable after going to Wyoming supersonic, shooting six hundred yards with that. Oh, I think so easy. And yeah. the subsonic, you know, you're going to be able to kill stuff at. Three four hundred yards with oh, the subsonic, yeah. I think. Um, you know, but if you're only going to shoot 150, maybe the eight inch gun's the thing to do. Right. So I don't know where things are going to go, but you know, we're never going to be able to make an eight six gun as light and compact as a three hundred blackout gun. Right. But you know, eight six is at least two to three times sometimes what three hundred blackout is capable of. So I think it depends on what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Like this, this is not going to have me throw my three hundred black my honey badger away. No, oh yeah. no, no. But I don't know. It, I'll probably use my fix and mini fix less in traditional calibers when we get this. This will probably be my primary hunting gun for a while. And yeah. if we do a gas gun or we work with somebody and we do something that's relatively lightweight and compact. Yeah, that's the thing I always think about, like Chad's saying about an elk, like an, on an elk hunt, using something that small or whatever. And people always seem to be like, I need a 26-inch barrel or whatever. And it's like dudes are shooting elk with bow and arrows at 35 oh, yeah. yards. You're in a timber. You're in yeah. a timber. You're yeah, if you can shoot an elk so. with a bow, you can shoot an elk with an 8 inch, 8 6. I would shoot an elk with a Barnes 110 yeah. honey badger all day long if it was uh, you know inside 100 yards. Right. All day long. Yeah, I think people, and I understand people wanting to do things ethically and all that. And I just think that people underestimate what modern ammunition can do. Well, yeah, and barrel length. I mean, the only reason you want that is if you can shoot farther. Right. But ethically, too, I mean, you start talking about that. How good can you shoot? Right. You want to shoot an elk at 600 yards. It doesn't matter how good the gun and the glass and the bullet is. If, you know, you, you at 600, you, you miss a call on wind or... Yeah. Operator. 
Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you think it's not unethical because you screw the shot up, but you right. had you know ammo that's deemed suitable by other right. people. That's where I just think we were talking about with Jason. Like all the morality with hunting and taking an animal, that's up to the individual. Yeah. Um, because there's no one, no matter what reason you hunt, generally that would be is okay with losing an animal. No, no. Yeah, and like, what kind of sicko wants to see an animal suffer? No, exactly. Like, yeah. And I mean, like you just said about the distance too. Like that's like the the Mike Murphy little rule of thumb. Like, if you're gonna, if you guys are shooting at 600, are you really out there getting dope and practicing at 1200? Like cutting it in half doing the hey go shoot it a thousand and then you know half cut that in half you know you're gonna hit it are guys yeah. really doing that yeah i don't know i know the hunts where i've been most <coughs> successful and i feel the most comfortable are, are where i have spent time you know behind the trigger shooting at distance confirming all my dope not just getting 100 meter zero and then using yeah. a ballistic cap but going and shooting and because i want to feel comfortable when i squeeze the trigger and i want to be able to make shots that you know the average hunter is not going to take right um but you know back to eight six there's so much potential and you know 300 blackout we knew it was limited from the beginning um and it's not you know it's not the best cartridge generally um except if you want super and subsonic out of an ar you want a lightweight gun and suppress as well it's the best other than that i mean there's you know, lots of cartridges that are better for killing. Right. Um, but you don't get subsonic capability or you get a bigger, heavier gun. Mm, I don't know. Mm. 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 Got to kill some pigs with it, Judson, mm -hmm. <laughs> now that I got ammo. So I think Ethan's got three supersonic loads. And I'm still, well, so far, I'm partial to that Barnes 210 bullet. But we'll see what we come up with. There'll be custom bullets done for it and off the shelf. Uh, bullets and in, in loads that we have produced and are available. Yeah. I'm sure Dave starts doing all his research. He's over. He's designing his own bullet. But, yeah, you know, I'm hoping we can get him to put a lot of his loading time in the future into the cartridge. I think it makes sense because if you want an 8-inch barrel or 12 and a half or a 16, you need the load for that, especially for subsonic, to get the most out of it. And like I said, the bigger companies like Hornady or Federal, they're not going to do that. Right. And that's where I think now, when we did 300 Blackout, it was a pretty niche thing at first, but I, I felt like I saw the future. And the market is just so much bigger now. Oh, yeah. And so many more people have silencers. It's so much more accepted. There's so many new gun owners, which we even talked about since Biden, you know, 10 million. Mm -hmm. And so it, I think there is a place for a company like Discrete Ballistics to really be able to grow and to fulfill the niche stuff. You know, niche. Like, right. I don't want, you know, the one load from Hornady that's going to be too weak out of my 8-inch barrel and supersonic out of my 16-inch. I mean, I'm sure it'll be good for the 12 and a half, but it'd be good to be able to get exactly what you want. Maybe David can do that. Well, next month... Uh, episode 60 is when uh, Jay gets redemption on the drone. We're setting up a like obstacle again? course, yeah. and we're going to give Jay his chance at redemption as a drone pilot, <laughs> and we're going to give him his license right on the spot when he finishes Wait, wait, who, who approved this? Because <laughs> I've not seen this. I've not seen an email on this. It's approved. We're doing it. Episode 60 next month. Who, who's drone? Tune in. Yeah, you buy one of those $25 drones. Drone. Drone? Yeah. I've been practicing. We're getting redemption. We're ending. We're ending it and settling the score. Y it's gonna be. You know what happens? You crash it, right? Yeah. I don't. Don't say it. No, nope, I don't know what happens. Drew spends four hours fixing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. And we're not gonna crash it. I've been practicing. Uh, really, an obstacle course? <laughs> you need an obstacle course. Like this is, hundred percent getting crashed. <laughs> we'll see. If you crash it and throw up. <laughs> if I crash it, I'm going to throw up. You're going to video it, aren't you, Thomas? <laughs> if I crash it, I'm going to throw oh up. Oh, my God. Sure. <laughs> Episode 60. That's what it is. So. Yeah. <laughs> Drone certification school. Man, that is bold. I mean, I got to applaud your balls for, like, going after this, man. I just got to show you. I didn't think they were there. They're there. That's <laughs> I took them from the devil this weekend. I don't know. Yeah. And for Tommy to think this is okay, I don't know, man. Trust your team, you know? I, I did, and then we had to repair the drone for a moment. <laughs> I was trying to learn. This is why it's a redemption. Yeah, exactly. This is why this is, he's earning his stripes back, so <laughs> yeah. we, can, we can end it here. Earning. Yeah. 
Earning. It mean, means something different in the South. Though. Yeah. I, I can't wait to hear about this one. Oh, oh. You'll see it. You can do it. I know. It's just All right. His money. If he yeah. crashes it, we're going to Georgia, and we're going to do a episode 61. It's going to be him worming all Judson's family's cattle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>